Good day everyone. Today we will be discussing the module 4 which is freezing. This is in continuation with our previous discussion about chilling wherein we discussed the fundamental principles of uh, chilling, the stages of chilling, as well as the methods and all the containers that are commonly used when you uh, chill aquatic products. And so today, we will be focusing more about freezing wherein you are expected to learn about the stages of freezing, the types of freezing, the methods of freezing, as well as the quality assessment of frozen fish. Also, the principles of thawing, what are the do's and don'ts when you do the thawing uh, process. Also, the common problems that are normally encountered during freezing um, preservation method okay so at the end of this module all of you are expected to be elucidated about the principles of freezing as well as you are expected to discuss the methods of freezing the stages of freezing and the types of freezing and the quality assessment of frozen fish as well as the principles of thawing and the common problems of freezing okay so i hope you will stay um towards the end of this video tutorial and so uh, here we have as a introduction of our discussion let us first differentiate the chilling versus freezing so in our previous discussion we understand that the freezing may keep the fish or the aquatic products being chilled up to one to two weeks only but unlike, uh, in freezing, in contrast, for example, um, although they are both uh, the cold processed or the cold uh, processing method that involves with aquatic uh, products, the freezing will keep the fish under proper conditions for several months without considerable changes in quality. So, sa chilling up to one to two weeks lang siya, of course. Kanang ato ang mga chilled products, dili maging na siyang bulungtad o dugay kayo, di ba? So, freezing, maabot siya mga several months. Considered as an excellent process for preserving quality of fish for a bigger or longer period of time. And there are different methods of chilling, by the way, no? Sa so, ato ang nailhan, the most advan advanced methods are basically ang air blast, freezing. Later on, we will discuss those the uh, contact plate uh, freezing as well as the immersion freezing so ato na siyang discuss in a while and um, basically the difference is that the freezing is that uh, it freezes or it preserves the aquatic products for a longer period of time unlike chilling that only keeps the fish um, uh, consumable for about one to two weeks so that's the their main difference and their similarities are are basically they're both preservation method by lowering the temperature okay so i hope that's clear another is that uh, freezing as as a way of describing what freezing is freezing is a way of stopping either partially or entirely the deteriorative activities of microorganisms and enzymes so in our previous discussions in module 2, uh, we have discussed that the, that the factors that causes the spoilage are basically microorganisms, enzymes, and other chemical um, actions, no? chemical activities that are going or that are happening in the flesh of the aquatic products. So here in freezing, it is a kind of stopping, no? stopping ang iyang activities that basically spoils our aquatic products. Gina stop na itong activity sa mga microorganisms and enzymes. Right? So that's that's uh, another way of describing what freezing is. And another is that it is a form of partial mild dehydration in which water is removed as ice. So this is basically, later on we will discuss what are, what are the stages of freezing and why this moisture turns into ice in the form of crystallization. So that's basically a mild dehydration. And then uh, third is that freezing involves um, lowering the temperature for below negative 10 degrees Celsius, wherein most of the bacterial activities 
are hampered no wala nagahita bo ang mga kasagaran mga uh, microbial activities so uh, negative 1 degree celsius all enzyme activities are generally reduced dili na tanan enzyme, enzyme activities are are active no dito na sila kasagaran mag reduce ng kasagaran um, uh, enzymatic activities at this um, temperature okay and so we have here the effects of freezing what are what are the basically the effects of freezing with regards to after thawing after uh, what are the biological changes and the chemical and physical changes and what happens with its um, the moisture contents of that particular product no so basically when you freeze a product and then you thaw them you will notice no distinguishable changes no dili gid kayo makita nimo ang murag wala kayo makita nimo nga changes with regards to the quality of fish because it was been uh, frozen and preserved and no microbial and enzymatic activities that occurred during that preservation and uh, also it is important to note that the biological changes for the frozen products are very minimal no gamay ra yung mga biological changes with regards to the the uh, composition of uh, mga microorganisms perhaps and uh, if you take a look at the chemical and physical and histolo histological changes it excessively prolonged the storage for less than negative degree celsius uh, negative 30 degrees celsius okay so it it basically um uh, prevent the the chemical reactions the phys uh, physical and histological reactions when we say histological meaning to say this is this this the changes in the tissue compositions of the flesh of the aquatic products and uh, the dehydration is basically partially and mild ang nahitabo sa dehydration process because uh, immediately the, the moisture contents of the products are immediately converted into ice in the process called crystallization. So since we have uh, identified the effects of freezing, let us now proceed to the stages of freezing. So there are basically three major stages of freezing. The first stage is what we call as the removal of heat. So this is where denoted by the fall of temperature. Temperature falls fairly rapidly to just about 0 degrees Celsius. So gina remove niya ang heat present in that particular raw material or the fish that we are preserving using the freezing method. Second stage is the conversion of water to ice. We call this as crystallization. Okay? So, during crystallization, the crystal zone or the period of thermal arrest at around negative 1 degree Celsius. So, this is where most of the enzymatic activities are lessened or minimized. No? During a stage, sa crystallization stage, na minimize na nato ang enzymatic activities. So, that's the second stage. Another, uh, the last stage is what we call as the further cooling of frozen fish. The frozen fish at Attains desired temperature for the storage at around negative 30 degrees Celsius. So we have a, gr a graph for that. Uh, if we want to take a look at the the pattern of the temperature changes during freezing uh, process, no? Tanaw na to. So the freezing time. This is the time basically taken to reduce the temperature from its initial temperature to a given temperature at its warmest, thickest part, okay? So that is what we defined as the freezing time. And then the final temperature is, is basically close to the required storage temperature of about negative 30 degrees Celsius. So katong atong ging, ging, uh, identify ang mga stages mo ni siya. Okay, so normally the temperature of the fish falls about 20 degrees Celsius at room temperature no so uh, during the first stage which is the removal of the heat it falls about zero degrees celsius so zero degrees celsius the shot so giga say zero degrees celsius it it turns the water into ice we call that as the crystallization which happens in the stage two 
So the temperature is constant and the water are turning into another phase. It turns into solid. Ang liquid phase ng water na nag-solidify through the process of crystallization. And the temperature does not change gradually. No? And uh, we have here the stage 3 which is the further cooling. It falls about from the 0 degree Celsius to the negative uh, 20 degrees Celsius. So basically this is what happens for a typical fish freezing curve. No? Muna siya ang illustration that describes the freezing curve of the aquatic products during the freezing process. Alright, so I hope that's clear. Now if you take a look at the types of freezing that is happening normally for for the two types of freezing which is what we call as the slow freezing and the quick freezing or also termed as the snap freezing if you want to take a look at the difference of these two types with regards to ice crystals normally the slow freezing method uh, creates large crystals unlike the quick freezing that creates a smaller crystals and uh, if you, if you want to take a look at the difference of these two types of freezing with regards to the thermal arrest period it, ang slow freezing has passes at a very slow rate no slow ang iyang uh, thermal arrest period and kung i-compare nato siya sa quick freezing or snap freezing pas pas kayo ang iyang freezing uh, uh, passing a uh, thermal arrest period now uh, there are two types i mean three types of uh, freezing i uh, three methods of freezing later on atong discuss and then you will understand which is quick freezing and which is slow freezing. And um, uh, the third component that basically distinguishes the slow freezing and quick freezing is the rate of freezing. Negative 2 millimeters per hour ang iyaang rate. No? Per hour na siyang rate. How, whereas the quick freezing or snap freezing it lowers the temperature of the fish from 0 to negative 5 degrees Celsius in 2 hours or less. So, ing ana kapaspas ang iyang rate of freezing. So, that's basically the differences between the two methods of freezing. Now, um, as I have said earlier, that there are three methods of freezing, namely the air blast freezing, the contact or plate freezing the spray or immersion freezing now kini mo siya isang gitawag nato na air blast freezer kini mo gitawag nato na contact plate or contact or plate freezer kini mo gitawag nato na spray or immersion freezer okay so isa isa ato na siyang tanawon and how does that work and and i have also prepared a uh, youtube video on that so naive youtube video na ko ipakita in a while so air blast freezing basically is a continuous flow of cold air passed over the product so gina blow ra siya og cold air nga muagi diha sa mga products as you can see here these are the fish stored in shelves which are basically blown by cold air and makes them frozen so you know ang um, um, advantage of this one is that uniform freezing it can attain only with a constant temperature at a speed of air so um Later, ako na ipakita ang link sa inyo ha. Uh, Tapos yung i-discuss ang tulukang method. Another method is the contact or plate freezing. So, that's basically indirect contact with hollow metal uh, freezer plates through which which a cold fluid is passed. No? Atong i atong ano to na siya pakita sa video kung how does that work. This type of method is not as versatile as air blast freezers used for freezing products into blocks no kasagaran nila yung mga hiniwa na daan tapos tapos i frozen din siya using this kind of method and then here we have the spray or immersion freezing uh, here the product is in direct contact with a fluid refrigerant sometimes uh, the brine solution which sometimes ang mga liquid nitrogen this is used for producing very high value products, no? In fact, we have already this technology in the DOST, no? Nakadevelop sila technology wherein they froze the they preserve the products 
no ilang gina gina immerse ra nila ang products and then after 5 to 20 minutes ginakuha na dayon nila ang product and it was already been solidified mura na siyag bato even mga gulay ila po nang gina preserve so it includes liquid nitrogen and carbon dioxide freezers so as i have said there are uh, i have prepared uh, videos on the 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 three methods of freezing no okay pakita sa inyo first video is this one okay so this is the air blast freezer so as you can see there uh, they're packing the shrimps into uh, cardboard boxes and then they're putting it into a shelves So the shelving is layers to layers. So uh, one personnel is opening the air blast freezer and they're putting it in. After several hours or minutes perhaps, they're taking out those products and it's already been frozen. So basically that's the context of that method. Now that is air blast freezing. Another method is what we call as the horizontal plate freezer so this is how does it uh, how how it works no of course it is since it is a hot uh, plate freezing there is always be plates that will have a direct contact with the products no as you can see there So there are uh, the fishes there, which are already gutted, no? Ang ilang mga um, gonads, which will be uh, packed in same containers, more or less the same, the same containers. And then there we go, the freezing procedure. So they are just basically uh, storing those um, gonads. So most products commonly preserved in this uh, method are high valued also. Yeah, dili mga mag store di hag mga sardines lang, bangsi lang, kas kay kag kuan printing. So contacts. So it can up uh, freeze which will have a direct contact with the metal which is also frozen then closing and after that they're just going to retrieve them which has already been frozen so frozen na na ilang na kuha only forward kaya para magdalita So the products are now stored already in boxes which can now be preserved for about several months so frozen and transported. Okay, so that how it appears on the gonads that are already been frozen. Okay, another method is what we call as the immersion method. Okay, sorry. Lobat na laptop. The immersion method is basically um, a technology being adopted by the Philippine government. Maaari kayang mapanatiling sariwa ang mga produktong agrikultura kung hindi ito ilalagay sa maraming yellow of ice? Kaya yan ng high-tech freezer na ito. Isang invention na maipagmamalaki natin dahil gawang Pinoy. So this this video was published in the year 2011. Fernando Vicente. Uh, so they just immerse the product.
gulay at yes, even, uh, even vegetables uh, and fruits. So as you can see there, the prawns are already frozen. Wala siyang bato. Depende sa kalaki, sa timbang, sa kalitik na sa produkto at sa temperature ng brine. Okay, so there are also vegetables being frozen. Mga sari-sari na mga gulay. These are basically frozen sumpo or prawn. Or a fish tiger. Tiger. Mga tiger shrimp. Tilapia. Yung technology na na-develop natin, sinasabi namin yung naula sapagkat may mga ganito na yung makina na naulang ginawa pero ito ang pinakamababad temperature na naaabot. Siguro makikita ninyo na nakakita ka nila ng negative 40. Okay, so that's basically the three methods of freezing that are commonly um, applied in the aquatic products. No, So again, uh, these methods are only true to all uh, most fish um, fish processing plants. No, Kasagara ng mga fish processing plants, they do have these technologies. Okay, so... Uh, let's proceed to the quality assessment of frozen fish. Uh, excuse me for a while. Okay, so where were we? We are uh, on the quality assessment of frozen fish. So um, in assessing the quality of the frozen products, we must first uh, we must also for or for to take um, take into consideration the factors that are normally will happen to the products that we uh, that we froze no so first uh, assessment is the protein denaturation factors no the proteins undergo irreversible, irreversible changes in sensory quality sometimes in the appearance and textures no kung bakit ani mo na siya sometimes ang mga products or ang mga flesh niya is mura na siya og flakes nga murag Maghait na mga flakes, so that is already an indication that the protein protein was denatured. And another is the loss in functional properties of muscle proteins, the solubility of water retention and gelling ability. Another indication is the loss in lipid emulsifying properties. So these factors are the results of protein denaturations. Okay, so that's one. Another one is the freezer burn. So this is a damage due to the excessive drying, no? Na sobraan ra pagka uh, freeze. So kasagaran mga frozen products dili ginato siya pa sobraan og uh, frozen tungod kay it will suffer from the the quality what we called as the freezer burn. So as a result, there are mats, no? White patches on the surface of frozen fish. And sometimes they have this change in appearance of the thawed product magbago ang iya ang mga appearance when when we talk about the freezer burn another is this one the lipid changes so the lipid components basically are the ones responsible for the the instant spoilage of the products because of the rancidity and rusting of lipids no so what is rusting rusting basically is the movement of oil to the surface of the fish during cold storage which is a result, uh, in re as a result, it, there will be a yellow and light brown discoloration appearance of your products. And so, uh, the rancidity, however, is the unpleasant odor or color that develops when fats have undergone oxidation during storage. So, as a result of this, fishy odor or flavor or unpleasant taint described as the linseed oil or paint. So basically, those are the qualities that needs to be checked for our frozen products. If this qualities is present, we are not certain that our products will be at good quality. So those are the three. Another is the, the dehydration and weight loss. So dehydration and weight loss, the surface flesh and thin parts of the flesh become very dry and porous. The weight loss is due to physical damage during dehydration. Sometimes uh, when you do further cooling at a very, very low temperature, 
it will suffer from this what we call as dehydration or weight loss. The loss in a significant is exceeding to 1% with a correct freezer or freezing process. Fifth one, which is the last one, is the development of cold storage flavors and odors. This is due to the improper and extended cold storage, no? And sometimes repetitive storage. So, development of cold storage flavor and odor. So, wala na tarong pag plaster or kaha na uh, wala na tarong pag wash. So, muna siya yung mga factors that will sometimes occur during your uh, frozen, uh, freezing process. And uh, here we have the thawing of frozen products. No, There are different methods of thawing, of course. No? Kasi garan ko natin yung mga frozen products, labi na fish or carne sa toang ref, uh, ginapathaw na nato na siya using a steel air. We call that as thawing in air. So, there are also air blast thawing or katong moving air. No? Bina, ang uban normally sa house ng mga level or sa mga balay-balay. Kung moving air, pahanginan or pa-electric fanan para dali ra mo, thaw. Thawing, thawing basically, but pa sa ato sa ato term, thawing is kang pagpahumok sa ato ang frozen products. Second method of thawing is thawing in water. So, there are thawing in water using a steel water. Inahumol rin nato siya. Sometimes you are thawing them using a running water. Running water, dili ka ng gadzagan nga water, ho? Kaneng, uh, water that is that is flowing no flowing gid pagasa ni mo gripo and then adto ang isda may go sa aga sa gripo or whatsoever another method is vacuum thawing requires relatively low temperature compared with the other thawing methods it uses microwave and ultrasound uh, thawing were combined with the vacuum thawing okay and another is the electrical methods the electric Electrical assistance, heating for thawing, tempering, uh, or tempering, partial thawing, or softening. There are, there are links I have provided here that which you could also read further for more information about vacuum thawing and electrical uh, thawing methods. So, kining ang mga um, links, you could open them and read more about the, the vacuum thawing and electrical methods thawing. So, uh, there are also the do's and don'ts when you handle uh, thawed products, no? Or frozen products during thawing. Dili ni mo ni siya dapat himuon kung, uh, kung mag-thaw ka o mga frozen products. O na po siya uh, mga dapat himuon, okay? First is, do not pry the fish apart, no? Dili ni mo siya pugson paghiwalay. Labi na ka na nagtikit ng mga isda. Ayaw siya lug sa paghiwalay tungod kay sometimes it will create uh, bruises or mga mga aknit na yung mga panit and sometimes it will it will damage the products. So kung iyon na siya export on yan ay mga samad sama dili na siya pwede dawaton for export. Second, do not put the frozen fish on the floor. Of course for decontamination, no? Mga contamination ng mga factors are also needs to be considered because the contaminants will will somehow cause the spoilage of your frozen products. And then three is the use of containers in thawing fish. So you must be selective, no? Okay, sometimes um, the containers will have something to do with the, the rate of freezing, no? Ang rate of freezing niya, hinay kung baga-baga ang imo mga containers. That is the reason why sometimes most advisable ka ng mga thin ra mga containers, butang nag butang nag ice cream, ka ng mga transparent ka mga containers, kasagarang ginahimo because they are, they are thin and uh, the temperature they are, they are not much of dili dako ang ilang insulating factor okay so that's third number four that needs to be avoided is that you do not subject the fish to repeated freezing and thawing kasagaran na ba nato labi na kong daghan atong fish on yung magluto at tagamay atong ithaw tapos magkuha tagamay balik na po nato sa freezer ang gatong na thaw na. So, that is dili na siya advisable. Tungod kay, there will be microorganisms that will thrive during thawing. And then, uh, it will, of course, the nature, the proteins, and some enzymatic activities will occur, which will also uh, hamper the shelf life of your frozen products. Okay? So, dili na to, pag dapat ang atong storage will be, ilahi na to siya into uh, may isulot siguro sa isa ka cellophane ang isa ka consumption or isa ka lutuan and then 
ibutang na maguha na pagkag another silofane for another lutuan and then ibutang ni mo na siya sa isa ka container tapos silofane na mo kuhaon during cooking kung magluto na ka okay so those are the do's and don'ts of uh, frozen or handling frozen fish during thawing Okay, so now let's proceed to the problems or the freezing problems commonly encountered when you deal with the frozen products. So first problem is what we call as the browning or blackening of tuna or bonito meat. So this is due to the oxidation of hemoglobin in the, bl in the blood and myoglobin in the meat. So as you can see here in this figure, but this is a frozen fish no frozen ani siya nga githaw nila so browning and a blackening is basically because of the hemoglobin in the blood and myoglobin in the meat so what what's with the hemoglobin no unsa may nahitab us dai sa hemoglobin nganong ngingana man siya hemoglobin is converted into oxyhemoglobin because of the oxidation process no ang oxidation that occur during the the improper storage of improper freezing storage muna siyang mag, mag uh, result to oxyhemoglobin. Myoglobin is converted to oxymyoglobin or brilliant red in color. Oxyhemoglobin is further converted to uh, methyhemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin will be converted also to methymyoglobin or methmyoglobin which have a characteristic of a dark brown and red or dark red in color through the action of oxidative enzymes. How to prevent this from happening? The prevention method is adding sodium nitrite at an, or an antioxidant such as ascorbic acid. So antioxidant meaning to say it prevents the oxidation reaction from happening. So kanamang ascorbic acids and some other acids that will prevent the oxidation process will prevent the browning and blackening of tuna or bonito meat. Another is the green discoloration of tuna. I guess this is familiar to most of you. No, makita tag mga green. No? Nata yung mga green kasagaran this one. Uh, excuse me. So, ang green ng mga products are basically due to the presence of the trimethyl oxide in the flesh and the other factors. Mayoglobin content, cysteine concentration, cooking conditions. So, how to prevent this from happening? Use only fresh raw material for freezing dili katong mga daot na no and when you when you store or when you freeze your products gutting and bleeding must be done imo siyang kuhaan og entrails kuhaan mo siyang tinai hasang and then uh, kuhaan mo siyang dugo and then ayaw pa rin mo siya ibutang sa freezer okay para ma-prevent mo ning greening discoloration okay so that's second Lastly is what we call as the browning or black spot in shrimps or in prawns. We call them normally as melanoses, no? Melanoses because of the melanins, no? Black pigments due to the oxidation of tyrosine and are similar substances into the melanin by uh, the tyrosinase, ty tyrosinase in the blood. Enzymatic discoloration are the the causes of the blackening. So as you can see here. This picture shows the blackening of the shrimps, no? Kasigaran, uh, because of this, the enzymes, I mean, uh, enzymatic discoloration. This one is a normal color. How to prevent this from happening is through the removal of the head for, for, for the shrimps, no? Itanggalo ni mo ang iyang head because the head are the ones that the uh, the spoilage will primarily occur dito mahitabo ang spoilage tungod kay ang ila ang gut naman na diri sa head ang ilang hepatopancreas naman sa head so katong hepatopancreas has a lot of microorganisms there so katong mga microorganisms will promote the activities of the enzymes and the activity of the enzymes will somehow oxidize and uh, the, the enzymatic discoloration will happen okay so kana siya nga mga factors are, are need to be prevented through the removal of the head. Another is in the form of proper washing before freezing. So, ugasan nato sila before they freeze. And you could also apply antioxidants to to the products that are uh, going to be frozen, ang mga especially mga prawns and shrimps. Okay, so more or less, more siya ang ato ang coverage for the freezing, which is the module four. 
So I have also posted sa inyo ang Google Classroom ang inyo ang mga task in relation to the freezing, no? Na dito sa inyo ang mga task ang inyo ang ah, nasa inyo ang Google Classroom ang inyo ang mga task sa freezing. So here we have the the freezing. Okay, so task 7. Mm -hmm. So ang task 7 ninyo involves um the compare and contrast the chilling and freezing 10 points elaborate the stages of freezing when they say elaborate you do not just name them and um, describe the five qualities that needs to be checked from a frozen fish so katong mga qualities na atong discuss ganiha actually na nagpasa isa sa inyo ang nagpasa na and uh Number uh, task 8 is you're going to explain the do's and don'ts in handling frozen fish during towing. Number 5 is cite the different prevention methods in addressing each of the three major freezing problems. So yung mga, so yung mga paagi para i-address or i-prevent ang katong um, mga problems encountered, commonly encountered during freezing. So nanay isa sa inyo nagpasa, I think, sino yun eh? C... One turned in, si Julia, nagpasa na si Julia. I'm not sure if this is this is correct, ang yung ipang pasa, no? So, thank you for um, staying tuned up to this moment. So, salamat sa pakiguban up to this portions. And uh, I hope to see you again in our um, next uh, sessions and our, and our module discussions for the salting process. So, the next portion will be the salting process and after that will be the dr uh, drying process and perhaps it will involve some laboratory laboratory activities like what you did in the module 2 the cuts and um katong mga cuts o mga fillets and so on and so forth okay so if you have any questions you may uh, chat me through our chat box katong ato ang group uh, group chat dito rin yung address ang mga questions so again, thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you again in our next session. Thank you.